Well, today we celebrate the Good Shepherd, and it started in the church in the third century. Some of the Christians, they started putting some uh, images of Christ the Good Shepherd. So usually he was represented with a, a kind of a short tunic, or a short hair, and uh, usually with the, the chip um, on his shoulders. So that's the image that we know, that we are familiar with. Um, so some also, some people were using the, the image of the Good Shepherd on, on some of the um, coffins, because uh, Jesus was the one who was going to lead them, you know, through the darkness of death into life. So beautiful image of Jesus. But that's the image, that's not the image that we hear in the gospel today. That's not the image of Christ, the Good Shepherd, in the gospel today. Because the, the image that we see is very different. Christ is telling the religious leaders, in this case the Pharisees, that they are thieves, that they are robbers. And it seems like they do not understand, and Jesus has to make it clear. He says, I am the gate. Anyone who has come uh, before me has been uh, a thief and a robber. And he's addressing it to the scribes and the Pharisees. So when they hear this, the first reaction is they become, became indignant. And then they wanted to kill Jesus. Because what he was telling them. So that's the way that Jesus is addressing this to them. He doesn't introduce himself as uh, the good shepherd. He doesn't say, I'm the good shepherd. But he's presenting himself as the gate. So he is the one. He is the door to enter into life. So those who belong to him are the ones who are able to listen to his voice. But to be able to listen to his voice, you have to become familiar with Jesus. Otherwise, you cannot hear his voice. In other words, sometimes you have to spend some time in prayer, speaking with him, listening to him, meditating, pondering where is God in your life. What is it that he's working in your family? What is it that he's working in you, in your struggles? Spending some time with him and, and seeing his presence in your midst. And then... Um, also, reading a good spiritual book, the Gospels, all of that helps us to get familiar with Jesus. We cannot love what we don't know. And that's the way that we recognize his voice, the voice of Christ who is the shepherd, the one who leads us to life. The doorkeeper, he says, when the shepherd comes, the doorkeeper opens the door. The doorkeeper is our conscience. And usually our conscience is the one that tells us when someone is trying to help us or someone is trying to hurt us. So we see when people have good intentions, they are trying to help us, they love us, they are present to us. They are helping in one way or another. And we see these good people. But we are also able to, to see when someone is not looking for what is good for us. Sometimes they can be among our friends, the ones who are trying to take us away from fate, or show us other ways that are not helping us. We hear those voices as well in our community. So how important is that, that we discern and we see what is it that is taking us to Christ or what is it that is separating us from Christ? What is it that is taking us to the door? That is Christ. And then the, the conscience is the one that helps us to recognize the voice of the shepherd. And when we hear his, his, his word, the Gospels, is when we say, he say he, he's right. He's uh, looking for what is good for me. He loves me. He cares for me. And then when we hear that voice, we say, yes, he's right. This is the way that I should go. 
And then we start following the Lord Jesus. And then we enter the door. And to enter the door means that we had to leave some things. Because Jesus wants us, wants us to be free. And there are some things in this world that are keeping us kind of tied to these things. Sometimes materialistic things. You know, things that are out there that we want to possess, to have. And that we are buying. And the danger with that is that we can fall into that idolatry, you know, willing to have all these things. And the problem with that is that then we start forgetting about the poor, the one who is in need, because I had to achieve my goal. I had to fulfill this. And then we start forgetting about other people. Or sometimes they, what the media are telling us, what is inviting us, the pleasures, the things that are out there, and then we're attracted by that. And when we follow those idols, it's not helping us, it's not making us free. We are not free, there is something missing. And that's why Jesus is trying to take us away from these things, you know, and that we enter the door with him. So he is the door, the one who gives us freedom, the one who can give us that joy that we're looking for, the happiness that we're looking for. And that's something that we find as we listen to his voice, as we follow Christ. He's the one who is leading the sheep to good pastures, the one who leads us to life. So the importance to recognize what is it that is leading me to life and what is leading me to death? What is it making me more human? Or what is it that is dehumanizing myself? And we ponder, what is it that is good for me? And we discern and we take the right direction, the right way. There is a story about uh, um, Archbishop Oscar Romero, who is a blessing now in the church. And um, he... Um, he was uh, having some struggles um, in his community in El Salvador because um, the political leaders were oppressing his people. And he was uh, kind of friends with some of these politicians. They, they actually recommended him to be an archbishop. And he became an archbishop of El Salvador. Um, and he was baptizing the children. But then later on, he started seeing that these people were oppressing, that those who were in power were oppressing his people. And he realized that he had to do something about that. And then he, see, he was able to see that they were killing his people. They were killing some of his priests and nuns. And then he said, I had to do something about it. And then he started speaking up. And then he was telling his people, you are killing your brothers and sisters. You are to be one family. And he was uh, transmitting on the radio every week that message. Until March uh, 24th, 1980. He was celebrating the Mass in a convent with the nuns. And he was just talking in his homily about how to love each other. As children of God. And then uh, an assassin came and he shot him and he killed him. Uh, he, the, the, the bullet uh, transpassed his heart and that's the way that, that he died as a martyr. He gave his life for his people. He wanted the good of his people. So that's the image of the good shepherd. He was like Christ. And that's what Christ wants for us. That we are well, that we are free. Fulfilled. And that's why he's the one who is leading us to the right pastures, the pastures that give us life. That's what is in the heart of Christ. So the good shepherd are those who care for his, um, his wife, her husband. When you care for each other, the good shepherd is the parents who care for their children who make themselves present to them, who sacrifice for them, who stay late caring for them when they are sick. 
those signs, the doctor who cares for his people, the well-being of his people, know what he can make. So all of us can be good shepherds in our midst and always to lead people to life. That's what Jesus is asking us. Him, to be his image. And he says, all the shepherds that came before me, they were robbers and thieves. Well, when you ponder about Moses, Abraham, or the prophets, well, no, they were not thieves. But Jesus is referring any other word that is not my word, any other belief that is not the one that I have taught you, they are thieves and robbers. Because he's the one who teaches the truth. Because he wants us to have life and life in abundance. That's what he wants for us. We ask the Lord to help us to listen to his voice, to follow, and to become like him, to become the good shepherds for those he has entrusted to us in our midst, in our families, in our community. Amen.